let me give you now a couple of easy point answers that you may see. Hopefully you'll see, you'll probably see. Here's our normal truss. Oops. On our supports, oops. And they want to know in the question, here's our load coming down of a thousand pounds. They want to know two things. They want to know, well, what's the load in that member? And what's the load in this member? Can anybody give me a quick answer? We're going to call it the stem of the stem of the T and the legs. These are easy, easy points right here. Stem of the L or stem of the T and legs of the L. What do I mean by that? Anytime you see a T, a little upside down T there, the stem of the T is equal to zero. Zero load. There's no way with pinned joints and loads only at joints to get any load into this member at all. Same thing with the legs of the L. Whenever you see an L with no load coming into that point, no reaction coming into that point, the legs of that L are effectively zero. So we can take this truss and simplify it and say that those don't even exist because there is no way to get any load into any of those members. Why in the world is that? Stem of the T likes the L equal to zero. Why can we make that claim? Well, let's put this member back for a minute. And we're going to get into, start talking about the method of joints in trusses, in uh, analyzing trusses, stem of the T and the legs of the L. Oops. Really what we do, why does that keep doing that? The method of joints, we're going to blow up a joint and just look at it, look at it closer than we normally would. So let's blow that joint up there. Here's our, here's our pin. There's our bottom member. There's our member coming up this way, just blown up real, real tight. We can say, all right, well, these things all have axial load in them. So this thing's going to either be doing that or that. Oops, that or that. This thing is either going to be doing that or it's going to be doing that. This thing's either going to be doing this or it's going to be doing that. What are our three rules again? Because I've now broken this out. Instead of breaking the truss free from its supports, I'm breaking this little section of truss out from reality. And we've replaced everything with arrows. Everything's replaced with arrows. So our three rules. What's left is right. What's right is left. So, okay, I've got something that's probably going right. I'm going to guess at this point. I'm going to say that those arrows are going out. I got something that's going left, something's going right. What about up and down? Well, I've only got one member. How in the world would I get any load into this thing at all? So that's got to equal to zero. Because I've got, it's just like when we've got a pin and we don't put a horizontal load on it because there's nothing else that can put load into it. So that's why we can make the claim that that member essentially doesn't exist. What if, instead of the 1,000 pounds being here, what if the 1,000 pounds is, whoops, what 1,000 pounds is over here? Oh, that's bad. So we blow this thing up, and we say, okay, I've still got my little left load, my little right load. I've got 1,000 pounds coming down at that joint. Can I still make the claim that that equals to zero? No. What is it equal to? 1,000 pounds. 
Okay. I think we've got some of the ground rules down. Geometry. This is sixty feet. That's twenty feet. It's a highway truss, or it's a uh, train truss, so it's twenty feet tall. And I want to look at. What do I want to know? I want to know what. The load is in this member right there. That's what the problem. Is. That's what the problem statement is asking me. Now we're not going to start with this thousand pounds and say, well, it comes up here and then it kind of comes around here. It's not the right way of looking at it. What's the first thing we're going to do, as always? Bam! Get rid of it. Oops. Get rid of this. Solve for the supports. So what are they? Actually, we're, we just really want to know this one right now. What's the load in this support? Thousand pounds. So clockwise, it's equal to what? About this point. Yep. Thousand times sixty. <coughs> Counterclockwise is equal to what we're looking for times what? 80? Equal those together. 1,000 times 60 is equal to whatever we're looking for times 80. That 80 goes under here. Algebra. What's that equal to? 1,000 times 60 divided by 80. 750 pounds. Now we can start talking intelligently about this. So what we're going to do is look at this little joint here. We're going to blow that up. I've got 750 coming up and I've got something going this way or that way not sure quite yet I got something going that way or that way not quite sure yet what's my geometry here what's the uh, what's the pitch on that one to one yeah, 45. So if they gave me 45 degrees here and not this 20 feet, the first thing I'm going to do is say, well, forget 45 degrees. I'm going to figure out what this height is. Because now I can start setting on my ratios. Twenty feet, twenty feet. What's this like then? Calculators. Twenty squared plus twenty squared square root. Okay, now we start looking at our well. What what goes up? What do you, what going up is equal to what's going down? What's going left is got to equal to what's going right. This skewed member is gonna mess us up. We don't want that. We want just ups and downs and lefts and rights. So I'm gonna replace this right with two loads. One that goes up and down, and one that goes left and right. When I do the up and when I replace it with an up and down one, what direction do you think it's gonna go? going to point up or is it going to point down? What do we think?
I've already got 750 pounds coming up. Do I have anything else coming up that could possibly go up? I don't see anything. So I know that I've got to have something that comes down. So when I replace this diagonal arrow with a horizontal and a vertical, I can already say that it's going to be a vertical. And not only that, what's it going to equal to? 750 pounds. Because those are the only two things in the whole problem. Now I've also got to replace this with something that goes left and right. So in order to get from this point, it's backwards, but in order to get from Columbus to Austin, Texas, I have to go over and then down. So my other arrow is going to be going towards the right. I'm just going to draw it down here. It's going to equal to something. So now we've replaced this diagonal completely with the two verticals. Now I can start talking intelligently about it because I've got just ups and downs and just lefts and rights. So I'm going to know what this leg of it is equal to. 700, whoops, 750 times what I want. What do I want? Well, this 750 is really in the 20 foot direction. And this is also in the 20 foot direction. So 750 times 20 feet, what I got, divide, or what I want, divided by what I got. I got 20 feet. 750 at 20 feet, and I want the load is at 20 feet is equal to 750. So now this, since it's a one-to-one, -one, is also equal to 750. But what they're asking for is what the load is on the diagonal. So we can take either one of those 750s times what I want. What do I want? Well, I want what's ever going on in the 28.3 direction. What do I got? Well, the 750 is in the 20 foot direction. What is that equal to? What do you get? 1061. Pounds, our answer, the load in that diagonal. Now, obviously, you can rerun this problem and say, well, instead of it being 20 feet tall, it's 15 feet tall, which will change all your ratios and give you different numbers here and here. They just equal to each other because it was just as high as it was wide. So we've solved the question of what's in this member, 1061 pounds. Would it be pretty easy to figure out what's in here? Well, we go back to our three rules. What's left is equal to what e is equal to all the right stuff. So what direction would this arrow point? I got 750 going towards the right. I got nothing else going on towards the right. This thing's going to have to go towards the left at 750 pounds. So now I've been able to figure out what all the uh, what all the loads are in those members.